Hi guys, Mel here. So today I am going to talk to you about the source of negativity and how you can learn to master your mind. Now the top tips I'm going to share with you are inspired by a wonderful spiritual teacher who you may or may not have heard of called Eckhart Tolle. This is his international bestseller, The Power of Now, which really is superb. And if you haven't read it, I strongly advise you to go out and buy yourself a cheap copy off Amazon because it's a wonderful testament to how you can master your mind, bring yourself more balance and really live in the now. So first I'm going to explain to you where negativity really comes from and Eckhart Tolle explains this really, really well. So I'm going to read you straight from the book so it has the same impact on you that it has on me. All negativity is caused by an accumulation of psychological time and denial of the present. Unease, anxiety, tension, stress, worry, these are all forms of fear and they are caused by too much future and not enough presence. Guilt, regret, resentment, grievances, sadness, bitterness and all forms of non-forgiveness are caused by too much past and not enough presence. So what's Eckhart really saying there? What he's really telling us is that we get so fixated on what's gone on in the past and so overwhelmed by the negative emotions surrounding those things, whether the breakdown of relationships or a problem at work or other issues relating to family or friends, that we get really stuck in that negative emotion. And he's also talking about the, the opposite of that, worrying incessantly about the future. That could be anything from, am I going to meet my Mr. Right? Will I actually be successful professionally? Am I ever going to achieve the sort of money I want? All these sorts of problems that we're all burdened by from time to time. And what he's really trying to explain to us is the very title of his book, The Power of Now, and how we find it so difficult when we're getting bogged down in the past and the future to really exist in the present. And that's where we find beauty and freedom and peace. So his great teaching from that paragraph is this. You may find it hard to recognize that time is actually the cause of your suffering or your problems because we're allowing ourselves to get stuck in the past and the future at the expense of the now. So I'd like to share with you my top four tips on how to step into the power of now and really enjoy some peace in your life, whether it's carving out 10 minutes in the morning when you wake up or carving out some time during your lunch break from work or in the evening, going to bed that little bit earlier just to enjoy some special time for you to enjoy the present. So my top tips, yoga, that won't come as a surprise to you. Yoga is known to be a wonderful way to really connect with the power of now. And that's achieved primarily through the beauty of the yogic breathing, which is extremely soothing and ignites your senses into a cyclical pattern of calm. So if you haven't tried yoga or you have and it's fallen by the wayside, try and, try and carve out some time either to do your own practice for 10 minutes one morning before work or to maybe go to a class on your way back from work and see how that makes you feel. My second top tip sounds like a boring one, but I can assure you it really isn't, and that's reading. Now, I was surprised to discover recently by an expert that reading gives us a greater sense of achievement than money. Now, that's because it's teaching us new things and it's allowing us to step out of the present into a different kind of reality. It's really escapist and it's wonderful for the soul. Okay, so whether it's ordering the power of the now and learning more about the spiritual world and how you can bring yourself balance, or just picking up a book that's been no doubt on your bookshelf for years that you haven't had the time to read. Just carve out some time, even 15 minutes in the morning before you go to work or just before bed and enjoy that special you time and just observe how it makes you feel. My number three top tip is getting out into nature. I think this is a really special one because the size and the scale of nature really, really overwhelms you in a positive way. You step outside yourself and your problems and you become consumed in the beauty of the world around you. And this is basically what mindfulness is. Okay, so it allows you to observe your thoughts and feelings and it brings your senses alive to enjoy the present moment, taking you away from those worries of the past and your anxieties about the future right into the power of now. 
And finally, listening. This is a wonderful little trick that you can use at any point in your day. I like to do this first thing in the morning when I wake up, when the cortisol levels are a bit higher and you might be feeling a little bit more anxious than you do later in the day. This is really about observing your surroundings, okay? So it might be that you wake up and you're feeling a little bit anxious about the day ahead. Just take a step back and close your eyes and listen to the sounds around you, whether it's the noises of the cars driving past your house, the buzzing of the alarm clock, or even your or your partner's breathing. And you can take it a step further than that and really, really try and engage your senses. Enjoy what you can touch, whether it's observing how the duvet feels between your fingers or enjoying the lights and the textures, the way that the sun's falling through the windows. It really, really calms your thought processes and enjoys and helps you to enjoy the power of the now. So I hope that those top tips will be something that you can apply over this weekend, perhaps, and going into your new week next week. Just try them out and see how they enhance your day and give you back that sense of control and freedom in the moment that you might sometimes struggle to come by when you're worrying about the past or the future. Have a lovely weekend.